Well, we live in a world of broken relationships. You know that? Sadly, yes. Um, it's true. one of those things that I could talk about all day and we can make a big deal out of it or we can laugh about it or we can even make it fun or exciting, but mostly it's kind of a sad thought. It is. I it mean, is. we could be having a therapy session about it. You could really do therapy, no doubt. You got that right. Mm -hmm. I mean, approximately 40 to 50 percent of the first marriages in this world today is, is going to end in divorce. Um, that's coming from research that you're getting from the American Psychological Association. That's quite a few people. That's sad. Yeah, I would say so. Um, why am I bringing this up? Well, every human that's ever walked this planet has been wronged by someone, right? No, never. Especially if you work in customer service, right? <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Everybody has been done wrong at some point in time or another. You get your feelings hurt, something goes wrong, something happens, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, as difficult as it might be to be kind of mistreated by other people, it's more difficult to actually be able to step up and actually forgive others for what they've done to us. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's sometimes something people aren't able to do. Right. It causes everlasting relationship problems that could have been could fixed. Could have been healed. Yeah, just definitely. from stepping up and overlooking something or just pulling it together and doing what needed to be done. Just by saying I'm sorry. Well, exactly. That those words mean quite a bit. And even if you're the one that's that was having the wrong being done to you, well, it's still your responsibility. Think about if you had went to those people because maybe they did what they did for circumstances you didn't even know, mm -hmm. or regardless of what the situation was. It can turn around if you just go talk to the people and say, look, I don't know what the deal is, but we need to fix this. And it's very hard for us to talk to others. I mean, it's just really hard to do. Okay, who am I and what am I even talking about? Um, I'm Wild. I am the founder of Truth Inspired, and I am wanting to talk to you guys today, thanking Pastor Mike Elaine from Socasty Baptist for getting us these Bible study books and giving us some things we can actually talk about with you guys in Truth Inspired and doing the online Bible study. Anybody wanting to be a part of that, we always welcome you to entertain any questions or anything that's going on. You can reach us through email at truth.inspired at yahoo.com. That's the place. So we want to hear from you guys. We want your testimonies. And if you want to be a part of our Bible study, please let us know. We love having that, guys. It's always a good thing. And in doing so today, we're going to be looking at some things that are really, really interesting. In fact, today's session is going to be about Joseph. And it's actually going to be how he's the center of a family reunion. It could have been very awkward. It wasn't, though, because he understood how God's sovereign plan brought him back together with his family. His brothers in particular, we need to kind of emphasize. Mm -hmm. That being said, why don't we go ahead and say a prayer? Father in heaven, we come to you this morning. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, I thank you for all your many blessings. I ask that you help anyone who's sick, who's not saved. We want the lost to come to you. Anyone confused, help clear that up and help them. Anyone who's having any problem whatsoever, Father, I ask that you let them know you're with them, giving them the strength, energy, and guidance, including the people who are with us today, studying and seeing what's going on in our Bible study. Lord, we just ask that you help us as we go through your study and do what you need us to do. God, just give us the strength, energy, and guidance as we just go right through everything and give us what we need to know in your word that can get us to do what you need us to do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, that being said, I need to get somebody to read for me right off the bat. Genesis 45, 1 through 3. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Okay. 
as you were reading that, you probably heard or you should have recognized that there was emotions that were displayed in those verses. Mm -hmm. Definitely key emotions, no doubt, right? Right. Um, I'm not going to go through them in detail, but you pretty much see that you can have how Joseph was trying to determine what was going on over the years and everything. You, you kind of see what's happening. And if you remember his first encounter with his brothers, and then you see what's going on with Benjamin, mm -hmm. and then you see how he's trying to kind of react with his brothers after things had changed through the years. Mm -hmm. All that's in this session. You can kind of see those in those verses. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So we kind of come to that because there's quite a bit to be gotten out of that. Um, well, for starters, I ask you a question. Why do people long for reconciliation and what stops them or frightens them about? Well, to answer the second question first, I think what stops people from Reconciliation is they're afraid. They're afraid of uh, how the other person's going to react. Are they going to accept me? Are they going to accept my apology? Are they going to be willing to continue this relationship? Or are they going to be harsh and turn away from me? Um, I think that uh, why people want to do it is because they they have that need to be connected, and and uh, we all we know that we're all made in the image of God, and uh, we're brothers and sisters, and. We're supposed to be reconciled to one another. So you see how this is a connection here. In fact, as you see what Joseph's going through, you you could have chose, in this case, what if it had been revenge? Mm -hmm. That's not the case. In fact, I'm challenging you guys this week, if nothing else, to get out of this whole lesson. I want you to look at your own lives and see if there's a situation that you need to watch out for and that you could fix that's not moving towards revenge, okay? But instead, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. And use the example of what we're getting out of what's going on with Joseph and what's happening here. You want to see how that forgiveness, we need to seek for it. Mm -hmm. And we need to determine any step that we can take to even heal possible wounds that were occurred in whatever the situation was that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Don't hold on to the past, I guess you could say, in that situation. Instead, reconcile it. Instead, give it to God. What a lesson. I just said it right there in those words. Give it to God. Mm -hmm. The whole lesson is called what? Reconcile. Appropriate, mm -hmm. is it not? Mm -hmm. What do all of us have times in life with? Someone doing us wrong or something not being the way we thought it should be, right? Right. We need to get over ourselves. Mm -hmm. How do you get over yourselves? You go back to what's my favorite verse. Jeremiah 29, 11. Whose plan is it in life, guys? It's God's plan. Somebody got that one memorized yet? <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future. Gee, that's kind of coming back to haunt all of us, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know what? As we look at this, let's kind of home in on today's a little more. Genesis, if you look at 45, verse 4 through 8, and Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So now in these verses, you see, if you listen to it, you can find Joseph continuing to reconnect with his brothers. Mm -hmm. Genesis 45, 5, that verse right there. We're going to read it again. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. You like memory verses? That's we see what one. happens with Jeremiah, how that one comes back right. for us. This is the one I want you guys to get out of this lesson. I mean, it's just a really good memory verse. 
this whole thing's going on here, and Joseph is able to see past all the distractions, but recognize God's true purpose in things. Mm -hmm. God sent Joseph to Egypt ahead of his family to preserve the lives of them and the lives of even other people. Right. Whoa. Whose plan is it? Right. It's not mine. It's, it's his. his. Guys, I've never really shared this, or some of you knows it, some of you don't. But Truth Inspired started because of something that I didn't intend to happen. I ended up in a hospital almost dead. Seizures were seizing me, and they still are today. I still have problems. Disability can be a real pain. But I've got to bring this up because I have pulled so close to God. And people tell me on a regular basis, they see the Lord in me and ask me to pray for them. That means I'm going down the road or I'm going to do things in my regular life with my family, not the way I plan to do. Because my plan of working every day and doing the stuff I was doing, working in radio and entertainment industry and doing things like that did not work out. I had a seizure after having a really good paying job, after working places. It, it just didn't work. I ended up in the hospital. And everywhere that I try to work, they would consider me a liability. Well, you know what? I got past that because I could hold a grudge against every one of those workplaces and all the people who just don't want to be around me and everything that's happened in my sickness and my life and all this. But I haven't done that. Instead, I've given it to God. And in giving it to God, I've met more people who sometimes I wonder are like angels in my life mm -hmm. because they come through at the right time to help me when I need help with getting disability help, when I don't have money to pay for something, when something's not right. When something's going wrong, the Lord always seems to put the right situation in place. And then guess what? Later on, you see a connection that you didn't. I was so upset when I got sick. I was so upset when I lost my job. I blamed God and I was very very angry. That was a big mistake because it was all part of God's plan. God had it so that I was going to eventually meet the right people to help me and be there for me throughout my entire disability while I moved closer to him. And here with my dad being sick as he is now and my mom being with me and, you know, we're in life together, I'm able to spend more time with them than the average person does with their family in their latter years of life and help even mom with dad and his sickness, as well as them help me with my disability. Mm -hmm. We're closer than ever. And I'm using this time to actually study the Bible, reading it through. And guess what? Remember I said Truth Inspired was established by that seizure? When I came out the hospital, when I wasn't supposed to live, the cross that you see on our page, it resembles a cross in the clouds that I actually saw that day and knew God wanted me to tell people an inspirational story, my testimony of how my life ended but began again, of how he had started something and people needed inspiration. COVID would hit shortly after that, and we would go from 7 to 70 members on Facebook, 70 to 700 on YouTube, and now from 700 to past 7,000, nay, almost 20,000 followers on TikTok today. Thank you guys for following and sharing, but know this, it was the good Lord's plan and that seizure that started it all, that changed my entire life. He seized me. He changed my life that wasn't my plan, mm -hmm. it was his. And we see that today, and this verse is so good because it's one that you can use. In fact, let's memorize it again. Read it one more time, 45.5. Now therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. All right, guys, like I said, God, you know what? You can do it. Help us. Help us every day to apply this verse and apply this to our life. Lord, you got this. We have to keep saying this on a regular basis. Give it to you. Thank you for everything. Verse 6 through 8, we see again um, Joseph is emphasizing God's hand in the work. And, you know, that actually probably is what calmed his brothers down where they had fears. Because can you imagine how they were when they saw him knowing, oh my gosh, this is him. Being in a position of authority. And we did what we did to him. Right. That's quite something. You know, they probably were... They probably thought they were going to die right then and there. Right. I mean, can you imagine how you feel when you see somebody, if you've done them wrong and you know you need to apologize, or you, a lot of times you avoid them. And again, that's why a lot of times people don't end up making the amends they need to in relationships because they just don't ever connect back regardless of what the situation was. The weird thing is a lot of people don't even know what started an argument. 
Mm -hmm. The devil can confuse people and cause confusion to the point where the most stupid thing can cause an argument and you can get into some kind of upset anger mode and then you not even know what happened mm -hmm. and it changed your whole life. So we got to be careful about that. And you do that by giving it to God on a daily basis. You do it by letting God know he has the plan. You recognize that God has his work in everything and he will help us cope with any of life's challenges. We can turn it around, guys. It's all not about us, but about him. Give it to him because he can handle it all. So believers can demonstrate forgiveness to others. Let's go ahead and read Genesis 45, 9 through 15. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast, and there will I nourish thee. For yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household, and all that thou hast, come to poverty." And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and of all that ye have seen. And ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. All right, so you see the enthusiasm here as Joseph's demonstration is coming with the family with Egypt. Now he gets to go and he's able to take care of them. Right. In fact, he's not only able to do that, he's able to put them in a fertile area that would keep them safe throughout the entire famine. Right. So there's quite something going on there, is there not? It basically comes to Joseph's dreams coming to pass as his brothers would bow down to him in Egypt. Uh -huh. um, he understood that God was using him for something great. And his example of forgiveness and really reconciliation reflected God's character. That's important, guys. We need to protect it and know that because if you think about that, it also brings on what happened with God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He just continued to keep his promises, did he not? Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. But I throw it out as a big deal because what are we supposed to do? This is what you got to get out of this. Believers can rejoice over reconciliation with others. Believers can affirm God's plans for their lives. And believers can demonstrate forgiveness to others. It's not that easy to do. We know that. In fact, if you want to, we can talk about it all day. I basically could say, what's something you know you get out of this? You would see how people healing don't want to do things or you want to see restoration and how relationships work or you do things and want to... Well, basically, I think you just need to demonstrate forgiveness to someone who's wronged you. See if you can end that relationship that ended by bringing it back. Mm -hmm. And the best way to get started is praise God mm -hmm. and ask him to help you. Mm -hmm. he'll, he'll help you. You'll see a light and you'll be able to follow it. Lord Jesus, I close today asking you to please, 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 please help us to continue to always praise God and be faithful to him knowing that it's by his faithfulness to forgive our sins and provide the Holy Spirit to guide us that we're able to do what we do. Lord, I pray specifically for people who need to experience some type of reconciliation with others, people who are having issues and doing things in whatever happened in their life. Some way, somehow, you let them see the light and the way to go so that they can possibly mend that relationship, come closer and the biggest relationship of all that needs to be mended is the one that we have with you, Father. We come to you in Jesus' name knowing that it's by your forgiveness of us through the blood of Christ that we can be saved. And that that man who was most innocent, Jesus, took all our sins. And he didn't deserve anything to go wrong and had the worst punishment that any of us could have ever had. God, thank you. Let me know that John 3, 16 is real. I do believe in you. In Jesus' name, I pray for others to continue to follow through and be with us as we reconcile anything going on in our lives by giving it to you and submitting to your holy plan. In Jesus' name, I pray for all of us. Help us for strength, energy, and guidance. Amen. That's Truth Inspired.